Hello everyone, my name is Ronald Zabonidis and I am an incoming PhD student at the Robotics Institute at Carnegie Mellon University. Today I'll be presenting my work on concept learning for interpretable multi-agent reinforcement learning. With burgeoning adoption in fields such as autonomous driving, service robotics, and healthcare, multi-agent robotic systems are increasingly operating in real-world environments. State-of-the-art multi-agent systems are often controlled by deep neural network models trained with reinforcement learning techniques, which is necessitated by the complexity of the real world. While these methods have shown great ability to generate effective and generalizable models, they do so at the expense of interpretability, and models often remain inscrutable to human operators. This lack of interpretability poses a significant risk especially with end-to-end -end models, where a rationale cannot be readily determined for why a model produced a certain decision, let alone provide a mechanism for intervening and correcting the rationale should it be incorrect. The ability to inspect and update is especially important for robotic systems where we often encounter shifts in data distributions when transferring policies from simulated environments to the real world. All right, now on to our approach. As you can see to the right, we have a depiction of the novel layer we introduce in a deep reinforcement learning network. Our approach is predicted on the insight that we can leverage domain knowledge from an expert in order to regularize the model and influence what information is encoded from the observations. One interesting note here is that we are effectively disaggregating representation learning for the model policy objective. We first uh, learn to predict a representation of the, from the raw observation, and then we pass on that representation to the agent policy. And we do this in the form of learning a set of concepts, which are semantically meaningful labels that can be extracted from observations, such as the presence of a concrete or abstract feature in an observation. And one example of this is the existence of a tree or the intention of a human. And so, so far we've just discussed the concept extraction portion of the model. And while this does yield an interpretive model, it also imposes the assumption that the set of concepts are sufficient for policy inference, which depending on the complexity of the environment may be impractical for humans to engineer. To erase this constraint, we introduce a scalable residual layer, which passes additional information to the subsequent policy layer, while ensuring it remains decorrelated with the concepts. In terms of implementation details, we use uh, supervised learning techniques to learn the concept extraction part of the layer. For regression concepts, we use L2 error, and uh, for Classification, we use focal loss, which is a cross-entropy variant designed for class imbalance situations which are likely to occur in our concept setting, as some concepts may be significantly rarer than others. In order to constrain the residual, additionally, uh, such that it does not encode information related to the concepts, uh, we decorrelate the neuron activations via whitening. Uh, and specifically, we use iterative normalization as it's more computationally efficient than standard whitening techniques due to the approximation of the whitening matrix and the ability to control the extent of whitening. As we'll see later in the results, we find whitening to be highly unstable in the MARL domain, and thus we limit the extent of whitening in our experiments using iterative normalization. Now we move on to the simulated and real-world experiments that we performed. Uh, this is the experimental scenario, which is a game of tag, in which one team of agents tries to prevent another team of agents from reaching an objective. An agent may tag another agent if they are within range and facing them, removing the other agent from play. We train defending team policies in simulation, achieving high win rates of around 74 to 83% in 2v2, 3v3, and 5v5 scenarios. As you can see here, we have uh, the transferred train policies to a real world 2v2 scenario in which the dynamics are substantially different. The concepts are not available 
uh, in the baseline methods uh, and really the baseline MARL policy exhibits learned behavior that's largely invariant to the attacking team's behavior. They perform roughly the same actions each time and uh, they get lucky sometimes but it's not great. <laughs> Uh, next, we have the soft concept models, which uh, clearly have some more responsive behavior, but uh, they should suffer more from a distributional shift. And so they're uh, predicting incorrect concepts and are therefore not performing well. Similarly, we have the hard concepts, uh, which uh, fails to translate well as well uh, and as we can see they're clearly mispredicting some of the concepts as well and therefore are performing poorly. Uh, however now we see by intervening over the concepts and correcting them we're able to boost the win rate from 25% to over 95%. Right now we'll move on to a set of uh, more tabular results. So as you can see here, we have the win rate and concept errors for our proposed models, uh, both soft and hard, and also a baseline without concepts. The hard model is trained over all the concepts, whereas the soft model is trained over a subset uh, and the base model with none. The win rate is the standard win rate of the policy when the policy is executed, and the intervened win rate is the win rate when the expert intervenes over all the concepts. Uh, range, strategy, and target are discrete concepts, and as such, uh, the error shown is the error in the accuracy score, while orientation and position are continuous and indicate mean squared error. Orientation is in radians, and position is a unitless value. And so, uh, other than the hard model performing pretty much always better than the soft and the soft better than the base, we can also see here that interventions in the case of the soft and hard models uh, almost always provide uh, a, better, a better win rate. The only exception is in the soft model for in the real world. And we hypothesize this is due to whatever uh, instability is being caused uh, is not due to the air to the concepts that we're updating and therefore the um, sim to real uh, instability still exists for the soft whereas we fixed it in the hard case since the hard has uh, more concepts and here we see training curves showing the win rate versus iterations over uh, five random training seeds in the 2v2 scenario uh, as we can see, the soft concept model is able to achieve win rates comparable to the hard models at particular training points, but it ultimately uh, suffers in a degradation in performance, uh, making it almost as pr it pretty much reaches down to the baseline again towards the end of training. So yeah, uh, in conclusion, in this work, we've introduced concept policy models for multi-agent reinforcement learning, which incorporates domain knowledge from an expert in the form of concepts. In doing so, we developed a general framework in which concepts may be optionally augmented with residual information in order to ease the restriction that they fully express the information necessary for policy prediction. Uh, we further show that this results in concept policy models which fall along a spectrum of regularization with hard models in which no residual is allowed, uh, soft concept models in which uh, the some residual information is around, allowed, and of course if you have uh, no hard concepts then this would just be regular reinforcement learning. Uh, we also empirically show that this regularization greatly stabilizes training and results in an improved accuracy and sample efficiently efficiency and crucially allows a human operator to query the model for its concept activations which provides an interpretable rationale for the policy's decisions. We further show that the operator intervenes and corrects incorrect concept predictions. When this occurs we can improve policy accuracy and partially compensate for distribution shifts. 
particularly in centurial transfer scenarios. Uh, and then so just a couple of uh, things we want to do for the future. Uh, firstly, we want to evaluate uh, asymmetric team compositions and learn a policy for the attackers. We'd like to re relax some of the constraints set by iterative normalization to maintain orthogonality between the soft and the hard concepts, but to remove the constraint that hard concepts should be orthogonal since uh, many times when we define a set of concepts in the real world, uh, the set of concepts we define will not end up being orthogonal. And therefore, it doesn't make a lot of sense to have that constraint there. We hypothesize that that is one of the reasons why uh, the soft concept models are so unstable. And lastly, we'd like to apply uh, concept policy models to more complex environments, such as the multi-agent Atari environments. All right, so to end things off, I'd like to thank all my wonderful mentors, uh, Dr. Katya Sakara, Joseph Campbell, uh, Simon Saputis, and Dana Hughes. And of course, uh, thank you to Rachel, John, and all the other mentors and sponsors who made RISC 2022 possible. Thank you.